So we're going to look shortly at a case, Sutter versus Artiste. This is a case where the federal government or the federal courts ruled in the parents' favor. Um, they show that the states did not make reasonable efforts in preventing the removal of the child or terminating the parents' rights, or they did not, they failed to act. In this case, they did not make reasonable efforts. And there, um, I also have here that they failed to grant an opportunity for a fair hearing. In addition to those things, reasonable efforts made to prevent removal of the child are one of the main reasons that or one of the main things that they violate, but they violate so many other things, especially with not giving someone a fair hearing and not allowing children to be heard in court. Children don't have adequate representation. So if any of those things have happened in your case, then you definitely qualify. So I'm going to be asking people to read in a moment. So just get ready. I think we've read the part about conspiracy before, but this is one of the, um, the fact that it's a uh, an adoption racket. We're accusing these child welfare agencies of operating a conspiracy or colluding between two or more people in order to remove children from the home and make money from the money that comes with that. So the reason why we want people to be in right standing and not have any pending criminal charges or um, still not being in a stable circumstances because the pendency case can't continue against you or they cannot justify removing your child if your circumstances are improved. So we want everyone to be in right standing so that way no one can have a cause of action against them to say that they shouldn't have the child or their own children. All right, so we're gonna take a little break here and have a history lesson on why bearing false witness has has always been a very popular um, way for people to deal with each other and get what they want from each other. So I'm going to exit the screen share right now. So under social under the Social Security Act, which we're going to see later on, they are able to to get a hold of you as a person, and then if there's something that you have that they want, which is usually your children, they'll use the courts and order to bear false witness against you. So I'm going to read um, 1 Kings chapter 21. It will, um, and then I'm going to have a dis let you have a discussion on, on if you think that your court proceeding was fundamentally flawed. And if you didn't have a fair hearing, such as your child didn't have a chance to express what they want, that's one thing. If you uh, didn't have a chance to to speak or present evidence, um, if you feel like the judge and the social worker were working together, any of those things. I just, want, I just want you to think about that while I read this passage. And it came to pass after these things that Naboth, the Jezreelite, had a vineyard, which was in Jezreel, hard by the palace of Ahab, king of Samaria. And Ahab spake unto Naboth, saying, Give me thy vineyard, that I may have it for a garden of herbs, because it is near unto my house, and I will give thee for a better vineyard than it. Or if it seem good to thee, I will give thee the worth of it in money. And Naboth said to Ahab, The Lord forbid it me, that I should give the inheritance of my fathers unto thee. And Ahab came into his house heavy and displeased because of the word which Naboth, the Jezreelite, had spoken to him. For he said, I will not give thee the inheritance of my fathers. And he laid down upon his bed and turned away his face and would eat no bread. But Jezebel, his wife, came to him and said unto him, Why is thou spirit so sad that thou eatest no bread? And he said unto her, Because I spake unto Naboth the Jezreelite. And he said unto him, Give me the vineyard for money or else. If it please thee, I will give thee another vineyard for it. And he answered, I will not give thee my vineyard. And Jezebel, his wife, said unto him, Dost thou now govern the kingdom of Israel? Arise and eat bread, and let thine heart be merry. I will give thee the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite. So she wrote letters in Ahab's name, and sealed them with his seal, and sent the letters unto the elders and to the nobles that were in his city dwelling with Naboth. And she wrote in the letters, saying, Proclaim a fast, and set Naboth on high among the people, and set two men, sons of Belial, before him to bear witness against him, saying, Thou didst blaspheme God and the king, and then carry him out and stone him that he may die. And the men of his city, even the elders and the nobles who were in the inhabitants in his city, did as Jezebel had said unto them. And it was written into the letters which she had said unto them. 
They proclaimed a, fl- a fast and set Naboth on high among the people. And there came in two men, children of Belial, and set before him, and the men of Belial witnessed against him, even against Naboth, in the presence of the people, saying, Naboth did blaspheme God and the king. Then they carried him forth out of the city and stoned him with stones that he died. Then they sent to Jezebel, saying, Naboth is stoned and is dead. And it came to pass when Naboth Je- when Jezebel heard that Naboth was stoned and was dead, that Jezebel said to Ahab, Arise, take possession of the vineyard, and Naboth the Jezreelite, which he refused to give thee for money, for Naboth is not alive but dead. And it came to pass when Ahab heard that Naboth was dead, that Ahab rose up to go down to the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite to take possession of it. <sighs> well, this is just First Kings. I'll have to share with you Second Kings next week, which happens to Jezebel.